Hey guys, this is Jay Calderon with Jay Unboxing, about to talk about the week's most exciting and prominent fights and results, and of course the fighters involved, and hand out some fighter grades. And as always, you guys can definitely hand out your own down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear when you disagree with, what you agree with, all that kind of good stuff. I'd love to hear it down there. Now, it wasn't the busiest weekend in the world of boxing, but some decent scraps nonetheless. Of course, going to be talking about the Danny Jacobs versus John Ryder fight, as well as the York Hall card featuring Danny Dignam and Lee McGregor as well. Some interesting fights there and some interesting results with a little bit of controversy. Of course, it's boxing, so that's always fun. So the grades will be a little bit up and down here, to be perfectly honest, but it kind of makes it a little more fun, in my opinion. So let's get into these grades. Now, the first fighter we're going to start with here is Lee McGregor. Now, he had a draw with Diego Ruiz, a 10-round draw, as a matter of fact, in the junior featherweight division. Now, the grade that I'm going to be going with here is a C-. minus. To be honest, I thought about a lower grade because he struggled with what should be considered a lesser opponent and made it a harder fight than it needed to be. You just saw him at times kind of running out of ideas and not quite getting through the the gears there when you really think he should be at this level. He fought too small at times and didn't really set his range. You know, he was a bigger, longer guy who could have really fought from the outside, but instead chose to make it more scrappy. And of course, that hurt him in the end. He walked into too many shots as a result of that because, again, he put himself in Reese's range much more by crouching down. Now, did he show a decent chin, and did he deal with some adversity to some extent in this fight? Yes, I will give him credit for that, and so that's kind of what saved him from what I would have given him in terms of a lower grade, but there were simply too many holes in his game, in my personal opinion. And the result only kind of raises more questions. You know, if he'd have gotten the win, you look at it and think, well, at least he scraped through. But in this case, I mean, even in, you know, kind of on home territory, he still was barely able to eke out that draw, which is why, really, in the end, he kind of gets the grade that he gets. Now, the second fighter we're going with here is Danny Dignam, who defeated Grant Dennis by six-round technical knockout in the middleweight division. And the grade that we're going with here is a B+. Now, to be fair, he did seem a bit plodding at times and chased more than cut off the ring at times, and as a result of that, again, walked into some shots, missed wildly at times as well. However, he did show some decent pop, nothing crazy, but he showed some patience in there, you know, tried to get the jab going at times and ultimately went to the body, which helped him really settle into the fight, and that was good to see in this situation. At times, however, he was a bit too stiff, too upright. That ultimately hurt him and, again, made him kind of look like he was following more than really cutting off the ring. Ultimately, when you look at these sort of performances, too, the grade, I think, has to reflect how well I think they perform going forward in their elected division. Based on this performance, do I see him competing with the guys near the top of 160 pounds? Probably not, and that's the problem. Um, again, he's still got the result here, still got a stoppage, which he's kind of been about a 50-50 power puncher stoppage kind of guy. So to get another one's a good kind of morale booster, good look, but ultimately he gets the grade he gets because, quite frankly, it was a decent performance, but that's about it. Now, the next fighter we're going to be going with here is Felix Cash, who defeated Magomed Medea via 10-round unanimous decision in the middleweight division. But the grade that we're going with here is a D+. Plus. Now, that's not to be too unfair, but this is simply not the performance Cash was looking to have, especially after such a long layoff. He just didn't look great. And, you know, he's kind of one of those guys people are expecting to maybe make some noise, at least, you know, have a chance at those kind of world title fights. But in this fight, you could very well make an argument that he might have lost this fight. He looked a bit too upright at times, didn't seem to get into the rhythm of his style, and was mostly outworked and outslugged in there, which, again... You're not, you know, you're not boxing as well as you can. You're not slugging more, you know, prominently in this fight, and you're not the busier fighter. It's very difficult to see how you won the fight, and more importantly, how you can kind of, you know, take from this and improve upon it when you really were just beaten in most ways in this fight. Now, you got to give him credit for trying and recovering enough when he was hurt. He did also box well at times. Again, when he did get going and he did use his range, his jab, and set things up, he looked a little bit better, and that kind of happened in those middle frames. But it was the beginning and the end of the fight where I had some questions. He did get the win, so to some degree, that's all that matters. But you don't get the sense, in my opinion, that he makes waves at 160 pounds, the same way that I did with Dignam. And, of course, that's sort of the reason, you know, based on this performance, that I just don't see him making those kind of moves. And as a result, he gets the grade he gets. Now, the fourth fighter we're going to go with here is Danny Jacobs. You know, he had a loss to John Ryder via 12-round split decision in the super middleweight division. And the grade that I'm going with is a C+. 
Now, personally, why I do think Jacobs probably did enough to win this fight, he just swept, I mean, like five out of the first six rounds. If he won one or two more in the back half, which I do think he did, he wins this fight, or at least gets the draw. But it's a close enough fight. And regardless of that, we have to face the fact that this was slippage showing here. And the fight was made a lot closer as a result of that. He started well and controlled the front half of the fight, as I mentioned. But when it got tougher in those middle frames, he didn't have the ability, it seemed, to adjust and take over the second half or to reclaim it, as it were. The Jacobs of the old is probably too skilled for Ryder, but that's just not the Jacobs that showed up. He just seemed a tick or two off from his former self, and at 35, that makes sense. And the reason that I go with the grade I go with, even though I think he might have won the fight, is number one, he didn't officially, but number two... Win or lose, this isn't the performance of a 35-year-old that's going to make a lot of waves at 168 pounds. Fifth fighter we're going here with is John Ryder, who of course defeats Danny Jacobs via 12-round split decision in the super middleweight division, and the grade we're going with is a B-. minus. Now, it's not much of a better grade, but that's, there's kind of a reason for that. He gets the win, so I have to give him credit for it, but to some degree I have similar complaints about Ryder as I do about Jacobs. He gets the slightly higher mark again because he won, but otherwise he left room for improvement to say the least. If you watch the first half of the fight, Ryder had no answers and literally gave away anywhere from four to six rounds at a minimum four. He finished strong, yes. He also didn't pack it in and play happy to be here role when it got tough. However, he still struggled even when Jacobs was fading. In the later half of the fight, it wasn't like he controlled all the fights. I think he lost the 12th round in my personal opinion. Ryder will always be a tough outing. But does he win most major fights at 168 pounds? Again, that's kind of the question that I have for a lot of these fighters this weekend because you just didn't see a great deal of, like, this guy can be the guy for his weight. And I didn't see that with Ryder as well. Still have to give him a decent mark as it was the biggest win of his career. And controversial or not, that does mean something. Honorable mention here is going to go to Magomed Medev. I think he actually looked good in his loss to Felix Cash with that 10-round unanimous decision at middleweight. And the grade I'm going with is a B plus. Not just for getting, in my opinion, perhaps jobbed, but he legitimately looked solid in there. And perhaps with a referee not letting Cash hold as much, he could have maybe stopped him or really hurt him, and then you'd never know what happens. Looked solid. His stock rose even in defeat. I think it was a solid overall performance, and I would definitely love to see him get another shot. I'm interested to see how he looked, because he looked like a nice mean middleweight and that's you know that's all you can ask for he certainly looks like a tough outing for most in any event those are my grades but what grades do you, would you have what would you hand out agree with me disagree let me know down in the comments who was your kind of shining star of the weekend we'd love to hear that as well also be sure to like comment share subscribe and follow me on twitter at jcalderon underscore job you can also email me at jonboxing at gmail.com also be sure to visit jonboxing.com for schedule results betting odds rankings more definitely be sure to check for my upcoming predictions later this week as well and as always until next time